Hey guys, this is Tucker with Matt Kiteboarding, and this week for Foil Fridays, we're going to talk about our team's five best picks for kites for foil boarding. Now these kites can be broken down into three distinct categories. We've got Ram Air foil kites. We have single strut kites and we have surf kites. Now, these kites have their own benefits and there are certainly any other kite you can ride behind a foil, but these ones have you know, real benefits that are quantifiable when you're foiling, really noticeable, and uh, each one has their trade-offs and their benefits. So don't forget to click the eye icon above to drop into our Foil Knowledge Center, complete this video, and check out at least twice as much information in our Foil Knowledge Center. So let's start with surf kites. Surf kites have a ton of benefits and we're gonna examine those. For most people out there riding in adequately powered conditions, these are going to be the choice. When our team goes foiling, our number one pick typically, the Cabrina Drifter. Why you ask? Well, the Cabrina Drifter drifts. It drifts really well. That means it sits further back in the window and will fall downwind with you uh, when you're traveling downwind. With a hydrofoil, oftentimes you're carving, you're moving downwind, riding swell downwind, or doing downwind transitions, and due to the efficiency of that foil, you're gonna be able to overrun that kite or Hindenburg your kite really easily. A lot easier than you would on a typical kite board or surfboard. Um, therefore, when you're doing that, having the kite that falls downwind with you makes any of those tricks or any of that downwind riding that much easier. The second thing we really like about the Drifter is its quick pivotal turning. Now when you're foil boarding, and especially once you reach an intermediate or advanced level, you can do some nifty tricks with your foil board. You can go pretty much anywhere you want. There's a lot of freedom. However, as a kite boarder, you know that wherever you go, your kite kind of needs to follow as well. Otherwise, it's going to fall out of the sky and hit the water. So having the availability to turn that kite without getting yarded off of your board or yanked off your board is really essential uh, in a lot of those tricks and a lot of that scenario where you're going to be moving in different ways uh, in a more efficient way faster um, than you typically would with a kiteboard or a surfboard. The Drifter also has extremely consistent smooth power delivery. What that means is as you move the bar up and down or you move through gusty sections of the wind it's not going to immediately give you a jolt or a heavy amount of power as you know as a foil boarder, or maybe you don't know, you want a smooth power delivery because the board is going to react or accelerate that much faster. If you're riding strapless, that could also mean that you're gonna get yanked off your board. So having that smooth power delivery gives you a real reliable amount of power without making it seem sketchy or uh, inconsistent on the foil board. Lastly, the Cabrina Drifter has two settings that are extremely applicable to foil boarding. The first setting, and our most frequent in setting, would be the onshore setting. That one is the setting that will allow you the most downwind drift and the best performance in most conditions. Now, if you're riding in lower power zone, where maybe you don't have quite enough power, or you know, you really need to get up wind quickly for some reason, which typically isn't an issue for foil boarding, you can use the offshore setting. That'll allow the kite to move further forward in the window. It won't sit back and drift quite as well, but it will give you a little bit more low end power and more efficiency upwind. Another surf kite that we really like is the North Neo. Now the North Neo is very similar to Cabrina Drifter in a lot of ways, but in some ways different as well. The Neo does drift quite well, although not quite as well as the Drifter. So it does reap most of those same benefits, but if you're looking for a kite that you can really ride swell downwind or move your, your board downwind at the kite and have it follow along with you, the Neo might not be quite as good as the Drifter in that regard. The Neo, like the Drifter, also turns really fast and pivotally. And then the largest difference between the two would be that the Neo has a little bit more power on the low end. It's a more grunty kite, if you will. Because of that, it's a little bit better in the really light wind scenarios, or if you're riding a higher aspect uh, foil or a smaller board. 
In addition to that, it's going to jump a little higher. Because the Neo is so powerful, you can actually choose to ride a smaller size kite, which is real cool because it means your kite's gonna turn that much faster. It'll save you a little bit of money, and hey, it could be your exaggerated high wind kite uh, on a twin tip or a surfboard if you choose to do that. The downside of the Neo's power is that it does tend to be a little bit punchy, if you will. And what I mean by that is that the power delivery is fairly gradual, um, but if you yank it on the bar a little bit, it's going to really you know, give you that jolt of power. Or if you're hitting a zone that's really gusty, you're gonna really feel that in your harness. So the Drifter, the Neo, both excellent kites, different choices going on there uh, that make one better for some circumstances, one better for the other. And at the end of the day, they're both excellent foil boarding kites in the surf category. So those are our two surf kites for foil boarding. And other surf kites are typically great choices as well. These ones just tend to be the favorites in the shop. We're gonna do another video that examines the differences in some of those and some of the benefits or trade-offs with those. Our next category is going to be single strut kites. Now single strut kites tend to be modeled after surf kites or free ride kites and slim down to only one strut to make them lighter weight for light wind scenarios. So these lighter kites, they fly in lighter winds. They tend to also have a little bit more power or more grunt on the low end since they're designed for light wind riding. When you go out on these kites, they tend to be fairly quick turning, they float well in the sky, and they tend to be quite efficient upwind. Because of that efficiency upwind, they tend not to drift downwind all that well. The first kite in our single strut category, and in no particular order, is the Nash Boxer. Nash Boxer came out last year as their single strut kite, and we've really enjoyed it. It's quite lightweight, it's a pivotal turning kite, and it's got great low end power. So in those real light days, in those days where maybe you can't fly your three strut or five strut or even seven strut kite, this is gonna stay in the sky a little bit easier and remain, remain a little bit lighter weight and more nimble than those kites in that scenario. So the Boxer has great low end grunt. A downside of that low end grunt, again, once you get more powered up, is that it's going to be pretty grunty and become overpowered quickly with a hydrofoil due to that apparent wind that you're creating uh, with the foil board. Our next kite in the single strut category is the North Mono. So the North Mono is similar to the Nash Boxer in that it too is extremely lightweight, has great low end grunt, is pivotal turning, so it's similar in performance. You're gonna be getting a lot of low end grunt and great performing kite in those light wind scenarios where your other kites aren't going to fly. It goes up wind very well. And just like the Nash Boxer, the trade off for that efficiency up wind that it has is going to be a lack in downwind drift, which isn't that big of a deal when you're talking about getting out in the lightest of days because no kite is gonna fall downwind all that well. Our third kite in the single strut category is the Airrush Ultra. Now this kite was received really well by everybody in the industry and from us as well. It's an extremely lightweight single strut kite, one of the lightest in fact that we have in stock for a leading edge inflatable, although not that much lighter than the Liquid Force Solo or the North Mono. So the Ultra is great because it's super lightweight, it can fly in a very little amount of wind, it's very efficient and has great grunt on the low end. It too has excellent pivotal turning, and you can reposition the kite without being yarded off the board. As with the other three kites, once these kites become really powered up, you really know it. They got a ton of bar pressure, and there's not much D power left when you get in the higher end of their wind range. Not much of an issue for foil boarding since most of us like to ride in the lower end of the wind range for these kites, but it is something to make note of. Our fifth and final kite, and our last category, would be Ram Air Kites. Our favorite Ram Air Kite for foiling is undoubtedly the HQ Matrix, or HQ4 Matrix, as they've recently rebranded. The HQ Matrix is purposefully built around light wind hydrofoiling in that the larger sizes are made with extra lightweight material, and the entire range is designed with a lower aspect canopy than you'll find with almost any other Ram Air Kite. Most of the Ram Air Kites out there in the market are very bladey, very high aspect, 
As a result, they're extremely efficient upwind and very fast when it comes to uh, apparent wind. However, they're difficult to fly in gusty winds. They can be near impossible to fly. And when they do end up falling back a little bit, they tend to bow tie or fold in half. You have almost no, none of those issues with the HQ matrix, and that is very stable in the sky. Sits further back in the window, or at least slightly, than most of those Ram Air foil kites. Not to say that this kite is lacking in power, because it's not. The power delivery is excellent. It's a little bit more pull and go than you'd expect from most Ram Air kites, which is great foiling when you really need that low end to start uh, from a board started position before you gain that board, or that board efficiency and that apparent wind. So if there's a downside to this kite, it's that it is a Ram Air kite. You have to fill it up. There's more bridles to deal with, although again, with the HQ Matrix, not that many more, uh, and definitely not as many as some of the more complex or high aspect race, race kites out there. If you do end up dropping this kite in the water, like most kites in light wind, it's gonna be quite difficult to relaunch. And because of it being a Ram Air kite, you're dropping it on cold water, it's gonna be very, very difficult because that air then compresses. So with any light wind kite, if you're dropping it on the water, there's a decent chance you're going to swim. This is slightly exaggerated because of the design of the Ram Air foil and the way that that whole deal works. In addition, you're going to go through a little bit of a different launching and landing procedure. And we can walk you through that in another video, but it's just something to learn. It's not too much more difficult or less difficult than any other way. If you are traveling with this kite, it's extremely lightweight and it packs down tiny. I mean, I can fit an 18 meter in a small duffel bag or a small compression sack, no problem at all. And for 2017 and 18, this kite can even be flown with your typical four line bar, no special bar required. Again, don't forget to check into our Foil Knowledge Center. We're working really hard building out the most comprehensive information that you can find. We're gonna have answers, questions, articles, everything you can imagine there. If you have a question, it might already be answered. Be sure to drop in there and check things out. It's gonna be expanding almost daily, definitely weekly. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. As always, subscribe. Until next time, we'll see you on Foil Fridays.